Big news out of Kyiv, Ukraine's Ministry of Defense just dropped a hint that it's working with Denmark's Terma AS, the same company behind the electronic warfare and self-protection systems already flying on NATO's F-16s. Ukraine may soon be upgrading not just its Western aircraft, but also its dusty old Soviet-era jets with cutting-edge Danish tech. I hope you feel the need for speed because today we're asking, what is Terma? What does it bring to the table? And why might this be the biggest upgrade Ukraine's air fleet has seen since the arrival of Western fighters? Hey friends, Wes here. Stick around because by the end of the video, you'll understand why Russian missile operators should probably start updating their LinkedIn profiles. Ukraine's Deputy Minister of Defense for Aviation Development, Kozyenko, met with Terma's CEO, Henrietta halberg Tigson in a high-level sit-down about boosting the Air Force's capabilities. According to Ukraine's Ministry of Defense, the talks focused on a couple things. Equipping Ukraine's existing fleet with Terma systems, enhancing detection, warning, and countermeasure tools with Danish solutions. Now, here's the kicker. Terma has already opened a representative office in Ukraine. That signals long-term commitment, and not just for the F-16s. The language in the ministry's statement hints that Ukraine wants to bring Terma tech to its Soviet-era fleet as well. Okay, so what does Terma actually make? Well, at its core, the Danish company specializes in avionics systems that keep pilots alive when everyone else is trying to kill them. Their bread and butter are self-protection systems that detect incoming threats, warn the pilot, and automatically deploy countermeasures. One of their flagship solutions is the ALQ-213 Electronic Warfare Management System. Think of it as the brain that connects all of an aircraft's defensive systems. Instead of forcing a pilot to manage radar warnings, missile alerts, and jammers separately, ALQ-213 fuses it all into a single unified interface. That means faster reactions and fewer mistakes when someone lights you up with a radar lock. Terma also produces PIDs Plus and ESIPs Plus pylons for NATO jets. These integrate missile warning sensors and flare dispensers right into the wing pylons. That means you get both more firepower and more survivability in the same package. On an F-16, that's four small diameter bombs ready to drop, plus a countermeasure system, watching your six. For Ukraine, these are survival kits. Every time a Ukrainian pilot takes off, there are Russian S-300, S-400, R-77 air-to-air missiles waiting. Without advanced countermeasures, a sortie can become a suicide mission. Termas systems drastically cut those odds. Now, here's where it gets interesting. When we talk about upgrading Soviet-era jets, we're not just talking about extending their lifespan, we're talking about fundamentally rewriting what those planes are capable of in a 21st century conflict. The MiG-29s, the Su-27s, and the Su-25s, still flying in Ukraine's colors, were built for an entirely different kind of war. They were designed for brute force speed and heavy ordnance and short, violent bursts of combat. What they weren't designed for was surviving in an electronic warfare battle space where every sortie is contested by radar locks, infrared seekers, long-range surface-to-air missiles. This is where Termas systems could transform the equation. A MiG-29 without upgrades is essentially flying blind when targeted by a modern missile, relying on flares, maneuver, and luck. A MiG-29 with an ALQ-213 controller, on the other hand, suddenly becomes a different animal. It gets the ability to recognize threats faster, deploy countermeasures intelligently, and give the pilot a fighting chance to stay alive. That means more aircraft returning to base, more sorties are flown, and more bombs on target. The same applies to the Su-25s, Ukraine's rugged ground attack aircraft, often called, like its cousin, the A-10 or Warthog, the flying tank. But in reality, its armor is outdated, and without modern avionics, it's a vulnerable target for Russian man pads and SAMs. Integrating Terma's countermeasure suite could give Su-25 pilots precious extra seconds to survive missile engagements, which, in a low-altitude strike roll, is the difference between life and death. And then there's the Su-27, Ukraine's long-range interceptor. On paper, it has the speed and range to compete with Russian fighters, but 
it lacks the digital backbone that modern jets like the Su-35 rely on. Terma's modular EW systems could help bridge that gap by giving Ukrainian Su-27s modern threat awareness, even if they can't match the Russians in raw thrust vectoring or radar performance. The irony here is sharp. Soviet designs built during the Cold War to challenge NATO may now be kept viable precisely because NATO technology is being crafted onto them. For Ukraine, this hybrid approach is pragmatic. Keep flying what you have, but make it harder to kill. For Russia, it's yet another headache because suddenly those obsolete aircraft they thought they could swat out of the sky become trickier opponents with Western electronic shields. Now, we're not turning old jets into F-35s here. We are really just leveraging Terma's expertise to make sure every Ukrainian pilot has a fair chance of coming home. And every Russian missile operator has to work that much harder. And here's the blunt truth. Russia's strength has always been layered air defenses. Ukraine's challenge is getting close enough to hit targets without being turned into flaming wreckage. Terma's solutions are all about breaking that chain. Missile warning sensors give pilots precious seconds to react. Automatic jammers and flares make it harder for enemy missiles to connect. And unified software means pilots can focus on fighting and flying, not flipping switches. This is persistence. If Ukrainian aircraft can survive longer over contested airspace, they can carry out more missions, deliver more munitions, and force Russia to spread its defenses thinner. That's how you grind down even the most formidable SAM networks. And what's striking about Terma's involvement is that it doesn't stop at bolting new gear onto F-16s or just patching up Soviet jets. The Danish company is quietly positioning itself as a cornerstone of Ukraine's future defense industry. That matters because unlike a one-off donation of aircraft or missiles, this kind of cooperation builds sustainable technological base inside of Ukraine itself. Terma has already opened a representative office, as I mentioned earlier, a symbolic but very real commitment that says we're here for the long haul. For a country fighting a war and simultaneously trying to modernize its defense sector, this is exactly the kind of anchor it needs. Having a Western aerospace and defense firm embedded locally means Ukrainian engineers, technicians, and pilots can collaborate directly with Terma experts rather than waiting months for systems to be shipped back and forth across Europe for upgrades or fixes. Even more interesting is Terma's modular approach to electronic warfare and avionics. They design their systems to be plug and play across fleets, meaning Ukraine could use a unified software backbone for different aircraft, drones, and possibly even ground systems. That kind of interoperability is NATO's bread and butter. And if Ukraine can align itself now, it won't just be surviving this war. It'll be laying the digital foundation for full NATO integration later. And the scope isn't limited to combat aircraft. Terma has solutions for radar, mission planning, noise cancellation tech, and even AI-enabled drone defense. Ukraine's own odd systems has already partnered with Terma to develop AI-based drone interceptors, which hints at how wide the partnership could grow. That's not just Ukraine buying hardware. That's Ukraine co-developing next-generation tech that can counter Russia's drone swarm doctrine. So while the headlines may focus on avionics for the F-16s, the broader picture is more ambitious. Terma could become one of the firms that helps Ukraine transition from a fully Soviet-inherited defense ecosystem to a modern, NATO-ready, and self-sufficient fighting force. That's bigger than any single jet upgrade. It's shaping the country's future industrial and military landscape. And back in Russia, this is terrible news. They're already struggling with NATO standard jets like the F-16, add Soviet airframes upgraded with Western avionics, and suddenly every engagement becomes more dangerous for Russian pilots and SAM operators. It's the same playbook we've seen with Frank and Sam and Ukraine's naval drones. Take what you got, bolt on Western tech, and watch the Russians' advantages melt away. And let's not forget the psychological factor. Every time a Ukrainian pilot dodges a missile because of Terma's systems, it's another blow to Russia's aura of air defense invincibility. Ukraine and Denmark's Terma AS are deepening cooperation. That means not only maintaining and upgrading Ukraine's F-16 fleet, but also breathing new life into its Soviet-era jets. With Terma's electronic warfare systems, especially the ALQ-213 and advanced self-protection pylons, Ukraine's air force could become dramatically harder to kill. 
It's one more reminder that in this war, survivability is a weapon in itself. And for Russia, now the skies just got a little bit more hostile. That's it for today, friends. When you subscribe, it convinces one more Russian conscript that maybe he should have gone to trade school. And as always, glory to Ukraine, glory to the heroes. Crimea is Ukraine.